Welcome back everybody. Today is a very interesting day as GitHub has announced and released a Vim GitHub Copilot client, which is very cool and uh, very interesting. As you all know, I'm very into Vim and using it and have talked a lot of crap about Copilot in the past. So today we're gonna try it. We're gonna take a look and uh, I'm gonna give you my thoughts and we'll see. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Real quick, before we get too deep into things, if you like videos like this and you wanna support the work I'm doing, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, find me across the internet. It really makes a difference and I really appreciate it. So here we are at the actual repository and the very first thing that I notice is this was, looks like written in one go by Tim Pope, who if you don't know who Tim Pope is, he's like the freaking godfather of Vim. He's written basically every incredible Vim plugin you've ever used. And he's got a great beard, look at that. So yeah, it's clear that GitHub partnered up with a just god of the Vim community to actually do this. So uh, let's give it a try, let's see what we need. So number one, installed Node.js. And let's just take a quick look at what Node version I have. Okay, 16, so that should be fine. We need just 12 or better. Looks like we also need a pre-release build of NeoVim. So this must only be a NeoVim plugin. Uh, let's take a quick look at what version we have for that. Whoops, this is NVim version. Uh, this is a release build. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get a nightly build of NeoVim, so let's do that real quick. Uh, usually the way I like to do this is it's just easy just to grab it off of GitHub, take it from the downloads folder, unzip it, throw it somewhere on your distribution. So now I'm gonna come into my dot files. I have a pretty custom way of doing this. So biggest thing is you just need to add it to whatever plugin manager you have. All right, so in theory, we have everything installed. And now with this sample Go program, we can actually, I guess, initialize a bunch of stuff. So let's see what we get with Copilot. Uh, Copilot, first copy your one-time code, press enter to open github.com in your browser. Success, now we need to authorize. Congratulations, you're all set. So now it's asking me to actually agree authenticated to GitHub as my username. Okay, cool. Now copilot help. Uh, so this is just kind of the general help text. It looks like most help things that you can do. So uh, how do we get this thing going? Suggestions are displayed inline and can be accepted by pressing tab. All right, let's give this bad boy a go. Oh my gosh, it's happening. Prince hello world. Yeah. Is it gonna do anything? <laughs> All right, let's give it a real thing. Uh, Prince, why am I the way I am? <gasps> oh my gosh, holy cow. Okay, let's actually have it do something semi-tricky. Let's say uh, authenticates to a Kubernetes cluster <laughs> uh uh not quite not quite okay all right all right it's it's really trying it's trying with some print lines okay that's fine uh this is honestly my first time actually trying this it's kind of crazy um let's just get rid of all that uh what do we want this thing to do let's let's make like a little game uh create a game with two players uh, and a board of nine pieces, sure. Thanks, GitHub. It even is suggesting what to do. <gasps> game with new game. Okay. Uh, well, it doesn't have a new game. Uh, can I suggest it, uh, create a new game with a given number of players and spaces? Oh my gosh. Holy crap. Y'all, this is blowing my freaking mind. It, I, I will no longer have a job. <laughs> it's even doing Vim for me. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, it still has a lot of stuff wrong. I mean, this is upset because it doesn't actually use it. That's fine. Uh, see, it creates a new game. It doesn't know about the game struct. So maybe up here, let's say, uh, create a game struct. Or maybe it really, it really would be more like uh, define the game struct. Wow. 
Okay, uh, it doesn't know about a board, so define the board struct. I really have no idea what kind of game this is actually going to be. I mean, it, ha it has a board, it has spaces. Uh, oh, now it's like the number of spaces. Spaces redeclared. Spaces, spaces. Okay, so this, this chunk is really interesting to me. It generated an invalid ghost struct where it's redeclaring spaces over itself. Uh, this is definitely not something you would... I mean, this is like syntax error 101. You can't redeclare something inside of this struct. Uh, so let's call this... I mean, this is really the number of spaces, the spaces on the board. Uh, yeah, I can see why I did that. I mean, it's they're both spaces, essentially. Um, let's just be pedantic num of spaces. And then this is like, oh, what's a space? Okay. Declare space. Wow. Okay. Cool. Now it wants a player. Uh, declare player. Sure. The amount of money the player has. There's money now in this game? Wow. All right. So we have our player. We have our spaces. We have our board. We have our game. That's a lot of structs. That's fine. Uh, so we create a new game. And this is calling a method called new board. I'm really just pulling the thread. Uh, create a... Oh, create a new board with a given number of spaces. Yeah. I mean, that seems like the method we want. New board. There it is. Uh, I'm just going to give myself some space. There we go. So now we have a new board method. Let's just read through what's happening. It's creating a board with a number of spaces. Oh, that's fascinating. So it actually captured my change that I made called this number of spaces. Wow. I still have no idea what's happening here. Uh, so we get a game play the game <laughs> it just calls a method play uh sure uh so i guess game game now needs uh a method create method game uh method play yeah do it uh i guess maybe create method play for game struct do the thing. All right, it's it's, it's borking out a bit on me. Uh, I I am completely shocked. I am completely shocked. Um, maybe I might not be I might not be giving it good like specific enough things, but already just like the most generic things I'm telling it, it's it's creating like you know legitimate code to do this stuff. This is crazy. All right, let's try this again. Uh, define the play method for the game struct all right it's definitely it's definitely borking out a bit on me this is getting a bit spaghetti code i'm not gonna lie it's a little uh all over the place i'm not sure you know what its intention was with these two player types okay so that's that's all good and well it definitely can write some go uh i want to see let's see let's just let's just get rid of all this uh package main create main funk can you do it oh heck yeah i can okay so now i just want to see if it uh can implement uh what does implement the main logic some of this is so vague what does it want to do with the main logic let's try that again logic <laughs> this is too broad too much it can't handle it okay but i want to see if it can do i mean it can do like implement sorting algorithm like this should be pretty simple okay sure sort the array sure uh print the array sure okay sure let's let's give it an array of i guess numbers maybe oh oh it knew exactly what i wanted well that's already sorted that's that's kind of cheating uh that's that's definitely cheating let's just let's just make it you know stick 10 there uh Okay, please sort the array now. Sort. Okay, uh, it wants a uh, define function sort. Implement the sorting. Yeah, I, I want you to do it. <laughs> All right, let's be very specific. Implement uh, merge sort algorithm for array. Hmm. It feels a little dumb. 
I'm like, I'm somewhere between like in total awe and kind of disappointed. Cause it's really cool that it's like getting this like code flow and stuff down, but I really would have expected it to do, you know, just be able to do this. Like this is like the most basic thing on the internet, sorting algorithms. There's probably thousands and thousands of implementations of merge sort it should have been able to pick up. Maybe it's Go. Maybe it's not smart enough at Go yet. Uh, okay, let's let's try let's try to be more pedantic. Uh, implement implement merge sort for and return. Oh, maybe maybe we need to return an array. So we would really say we're going to return a slice of ints. Uh, implement merge sort and re uh, and return new sorted slice. I mean, really, that's what it is. Return array. <laughs> it just returns it back. Stupid. I mean, color me both impressed, like I said, and a little disappointed. I definitely thought it was going to be much smarter in a lot of senses. Huge kudos to Tim Pope. I mean, that was probably one of the more smooth, just tab alting experiences I've had in Vim. Uh, which, you know, it felt very similar to how it is in VS Code and how I've seen people use it in VS Code. Uh, but wow, like very well done, Tim, uh, as always with all your plugins. But yeah, it's interesting. You know, I still stand by what I said earlier about companies just like really not being down for their developers to use this. And, you know, that's primarily a legal thing. But I don't know, I could definitely see this being a bigger, bigger part of the industry in the future. I, I'm convinced that was a, that was a really cool experience, honestly. Uh, I'm shocked, honestly. I think that's really, really cool. Um, and it's in Vim, so like, yeah, I'm gonna be excited about it. So yeah, overall, thumbs up. Good job, Tim. Cool experience. Wish it was a little smarter. That really would have blown my mind. Uh, maybe that's a Vim thing. Maybe I should try it in VS Code, see if it's that much smarter with Go. Maybe it's better with Python. I don't really know where it's at, honestly. Uh, I saw today that they had released this Vim plugin and that's the most I had heard about it in, in weeks, honestly. If you like this video and you wanna see more about engineering, Vim, life, whatever, like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, and I will catch you all next time.